is the last day of the, the rains retreat. It's called the Mahabharata, the Great Invitation. It's the day. Is, it's the day when instead of chanting the Bhatimoka, the monks invite each other to criticize themselves. In other words, it's anyone during the rains has either seen or heard or suspected that one of the other monks has broken a rule. This is a time when they're free to speak up. Ordinarily, you, before you want to criticize someone for that sort of thing, you have to ask their permission. But the invitation is giving that permission without even being asked. It sort of opens the, the floor to any criticisms at all. And it's an important, it's an important ceremony. Nowadays, it tends to be more or less pro forma. You do the border now, you're happy that it, it's over fast, unlike the body mocha, and you can get on with other things. But it is an important reminder to be open to criticism, to be willing to admit mistakes. Otherwise, how are you going to learn? It's a basic principle throughout the Buddha's teachings. We'll all make mistakes. Even the Buddha himself made mistakes before his awakening, going down the wrong path many, many times in many different lifetimes. Before he discovered the middle way. And it was through those points in his practice when he realized what I've been doing sometimes for years was a mistake. And his willingness to look for other ways to do things, that's what enabled him to become the Buddha, to become awakened. In other words, there's no way you can learn unless you recognize a mistake for a mistake and resolve to, to make changes. The people who do some of the most damage in the world are the ones who don't see the error of their own ways or who see the admitting of a mistake as a sign of weakness and insist that the people who oppose them are the ones who are stupid or ill-intentioned. They're not willing to turn around and look at their own problems, their own mistakes. They end up doing a lot of damage, both for themselves and for the people around them. So we see this clearly in others, but sometimes it's harder to see it in ourselves. That's why we want to, not simply as a pro forma ceremony, but at all times be willing to listen to other people's criticisms. There's an important rule against disrespect. It's primarily aimed at showing disrespect to other monks, especially when you criticize you either with regard to the Dharma or the Vinaya. But there's an in interesting subsidiary rule. There's a lesser offense for showing disrespect for anybody who criticizes you for anything. Even if the criticism is ill-founded, even if the person is a fool, you don't show disrespect. You show yourself open to criticism, because that way you learn things you might not have learned otherwise. So even though the ceremony of the invitation has become pro forma, it's important to keep the meaning in mind and to try to apply it at all times. in all aspects of your life. There's an interesting sutra where the Buddha says there are two kinds of fools in the world, those who don't admit their mistakes. The other kind is someone who will not accept an apology from someone who admits his mistake. So it's important that we learn to be wise in both respects, both on an external level and on an internal level. Because some of the biggest mis mistakes we make in life are the ones inside the mind. Siding with an unskillful thought as opposed to a skillful one. Taking it up an unskillful practice and refusing to see the harm that it creates. These are the things we really have to be on the lookout for. Because many times those are the things nobody else can see, the things that go on inside our mind. They can see some of the effects, but they can't be 
sure about what's going on in the mind, what thought, what intention lies behind an unskillful action. We're the ones who know. And if we don't develop the habit from the outside of admitting mistakes, it's hard to admit mistakes inside. So as you meditate and as you go through the other aspects of your practice, always be on the lookout for what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what the results are. Because as the Buddha pointed out to Ravala, those are the ways you... That's the way you begin to see what's a mistake and what's not, by looking at the results of your thoughts, of your words, of your deeds. For example, while we're sitting here looking at the breath, how's it going? Is the breath comfortable? Is it as comfortable as it could be? Exactly what stage are you in the practice? Many times we don't even have our bearings. Right? The stage where you're trying to settle down, or have things begun to settle down, and you have to look out for other problems. Because after all, when you start out, you're focusing in the direction of stillness, stillness, stillness. When the mind does come to a certain measure of stillness, then you have to watch out for its sleepiness. So, how do you prevent that? You expand your range of awareness, give the mind work to do with the breath to keep yourself alert, to keep yourself awake, so you don't just drift off into either the extreme of restlessness or the extreme of sloth and torpor. There's a balance that has to be made. It requires skill, it requires attention, and not just thinking still, 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 still. You've got to notice where you are and what should be done, what the dangers are of the position in which you currently are. And then what can be done to correct them or to prevent the dangers? Or if you, you find yourself slipping off into one of the extremes, what you can do to correct it? This is a principle that's basic to any skill. And John Lee has a nice passage. He says it's like learning how to make baskets. You make a basket, instead of just being proud of the fact that we finally made it, you got a basket where you look at it. Decide, okay, what still needs to be done here? How can it be improved? And then you try to make another one, better than the last. Well, how does it become better than the last? You're trying to pay more attention to what you're doing to see precisely if there is a mistake, where it came from. And then you make corrections. There's an important aspect of the Buddhist teachings. You're ability to refine your powers of judgment, refine your standards. Because the teaching starts out with the assumption that we're all imperfect, we're all going to make mistakes. So instead of just telling you what to do so as not to make, so as have, to ensure yourself from ever making mistakes ever again, says, the mistakes are inevitable. The issue is how to learn from them. So instead of being your enemies, they become your teachers. You look at the text, there are a lot of basic principles in the text, but their precise application and the details, those are left up to you. And it's not that if the Buddha could have detailed every possible situation that might come up in the practice, that he would have done it. It's important that he left certain things up to your powers of judgment, so you can develop your powers of judgment, because those are the, that's the aspect of the mind that turns into discernment. If it's simply a matter of following a recipe, following a mechanical process, the Buddha would have done it, but it's, it can't be done that way. Each meditator has to develop his or her own powers of judgment, powers of observation, because those are the powers that lead to release. So when we have an important ceremony like the Bawadana ceremony this morning, it's important to reflect on the meaning and how it re connects with some of the deeper teachings, particularly the teachings that apply to the training of the mind, because there's nothing in the Vinaya. It's irrelevant to the mind. The 
Dharma and the Vinaya are all of a piece. Similarly, they approach the question of training the mind from different sides. The Dharma is focuses primarily in principles, the Vinaya primarily in rules. Because the general principles can't cover the whole territory, nor can rules with their specifics cover the whole territory. The combination of the two puts the question of how to train the mind into, into the proper perspective. And the two perspectives help each other. So it's important to keep both in mind. You go through a particular ceremony, it's not just something you just have to get through. But there's a lesson there. If you learn how to extract the lesson, you've benefited from the, from the ceremony, from the rule, from the tradition. And it's this willingness to learn that makes all the difference in the practice. <laughs>